All right, good evening. Welcome to Mountain View Baptist Church this evening. We're glad you're here. Let's all stand and sing our first song, our only song, number uh, 89, which is Mansion Over the Hilltop. I'm satisfied with just the cottage below, a little silver. Shine. I want a gold one, that silver line. I got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow. And someday yonder we will never more.
just over the hilltop. In that bright land where we'll never grow. Don't think me poor or deserted or lonely. I'm not discouraged. I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city. I want a mansion, a harp and a crown. Amen. Great singing. Good evening and welcome to our midweek Bible study and prayer time. I love songs about heaven. Uh, boy, they certainly uh, turn our eyes uh, to our eternal home and uh, certainly brings the encouragement we need here uh, to uh, run our race. And I pray that uh, tonight we'll be encouraged. Uh, you know, one of the greatest tools that Satan has is discouragement. And, uh, and I know folks, uh, I, I know a lot of folks get discouraged, they are discouraged, and so uh, it's our prayer tonight that um, coming around God's Word, being with God's people, uh, for those watching from home, uh, we pray you'll be encouraged as well. Uh, let's begin in a word of prayer. We'll ask God's blessing upon our service this evening. Uh, Brother Ted Town, good to have you folks back, uh, traveling uh, back from uh, your daughter's graduation, and uh, congratulations once again to Tiffany. Good to have you uh, folks back and answer the prayer. I uh, made it back safely. And uh, would you open us in a word of prayer, Brother Ted? Hmm. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right. How are we liking this weather? Wow. What a scorcher today. I, I don't, I'm going to be honest. I'm not ready for it. This is way too hot for me. Way too hot. Uh, and, uh, but I don't know. This year, it just seems like we've had a long spring. You know, we've had those uh, winters where, uh, you know, it's cold and all of a sudden, boom, it's hot. And, and, but this year, we've had a very nice, easy transition into uh, the summer so far. So uh, we're thankful uh, for the beautiful weather. And uh, all that we're able to get done around here, we have our excavators back up here working. And as you see, they did a little, little backfilling around our sidewalk and, and uh, down the end of our parking lot. They're uh, doing the auxiliary parking. So uh, we're, we're glad for uh, the work that's continuing. So keep that in prayer. Uh, we're going to pray. Uh, we have uh, many upon our list. And Chad's going to come in just a moment and share uh, with us some of the new, re new requests. Uh, but before he does that, I just want to say what a blessing it was this past Sunday to have the Lunday family, um, uh, missionaries going to Brazil, and, uh, and a young man, he preached, uh, I mean, he, this man's, young man's full of energy, uh, and preached a powerful message Sunday night. If you missed it, you can go back um, and uh, on our archive sermons and look at that, uh, get, get a, a blessing, really, and uh, so we appreciate them. Uh, we, were, we were able to uh, house them for a couple of days in our prophet's room, and so they made their way out uh, this morning, so uh, please keep them in prayer. But it was a joy having them here and meeting them, uh, and uh, we thank the Lord for these young families. You know, God's still calling people to bring the gospel. And isn't it wonderful to see a young couple like that committing to God's work? Uh, I've always said this, you know, we always have those questions, you know, what about these people who are way out in you know, the jungles or these remote places of the earth that never hear the gospel. What about those people? 
Well, isn't it interesting how he talked about in his message about that tribe? Did you catch that? He ta- talked about that tribe, he said, where, where they are just, just totally isolated from the rest of the world, and they're going to reach them. And I've always believed that. I've always believed that there are those people in the world, and they truly want to know the truth. You know what God's going to do? He's going to raise up missionaries. Amen? He's going to raise up missionaries and send them. Uh, So, uh, you know, creation teaches man uh, about God. We know that. Romans tells us that by the creation of the world, that God can be clearly seen, uh, even as Godhead in power. But it's... It's not enough. It's not sufficient to save, is it? It's, it's enough to give knowledge that there is a God, but uh, not enough knowledge uh, to be saved. And that's why God sends people. Uh, how shall they preach except they be sent? Pray for missionaries. Pray for these missionaries who go bring the gospel. Pray for where they're going. Pray for the areas, the, these Brazilians uh, and uh, these tribes. Let's, let's pray for them that God would open their hearts as well. And, uh, and do a great work. I love what he's talked about, that sleeping giant. That was awesome. So I, I've just been, uh, just been thinking a lot about them and, and uh, their mission and just thanking God for missionaries this week. We do praise the Lord. Keep our missionaries in prayer. Uh, we're praying uh, this week especially for the Barboza family and uh, praying also for the Bartleys. Keep them in prayer. Uh, ask God to help them uh, on the field. And we'll, we'll uh, go to our prayer time. And uh, does everyone have an updated prayer list? You've probably uh, got one coming in, but does anyone need an updated prayer list? Just raise your hand if you need an updated prayer list. All right, there's several here. Brother Jeff, if you just want to grab a couple of those. And um, Sister Libby's up. If you wouldn't mind grabbing a handful, too, you can get your side. Uh, All right, she didn't know she was going to be put to work. Thank you, Libby. She'll, She'll... all right, if you're on this side, Sister Libby's going to come give you one. All right, there's a couple over here, um, and then up front here, uh, Brother Jeff. All right, all right, Chad's going to come. He's going to uh, go through our list. We have some new requests, and uh, please take time to pray. Take time to pray, not just church time, but bring them home. Uh, pray for these requests. Chad, you come at this time, share our prayer requests. Okay, we have quite a few new ones. Uh, we're continuing to pray for, um, well, praise for the towns traveling back. And, um, of course, uh, uh, just a word if, you know, you have a prayer request that you mentioned here and it's been answered. We'd love to hear that. We'd love to uh, answer that praise. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So to summarize for those who are uh, online, uh, town's just God providing the entire way. So that's a blessing. And of course, those of you who have a prayer request and you, uh, that prayer is answered, tell us. We'd love to hear about it and we'd love to share that praise. Uh, but of course, uh, once again, congratulations. We're also, and speaking of congratulations, uh, coming up, Caleb, Elizabeth's wedding. This Saturday, we're praying for you that everything goes well. Uh, you're just a week behind, you know, another week, and we could have had a mask off at the wedding, but oh well, but uh, continue to pray for them that everything will go well. Uh, also for uh, Diana Westcott, she's having surgery this Friday, so we'll keep you... No, not this Friday, next oh, Friday. next Friday, okay, it's next Friday. Next Friday, okay, okay, so... Okay, <laughs> so next Friday, we'll uh, continue to pray for you that the doctors will uh, have wisdom uh, during that time. Um, Lenny had mentioned that his mom, Madeline, um, she's or just her health, uh, so let's continue to pray for her. Obviously, chronic health issues. And he also had mentioned a, a few of his friends, um, Amy, Ryan, and Robin. Um, they both have cancer. Let's pray for them. And his friend Ronnie uh, is having his bladder removed. Uh, so let's pray uh, for Lenny's friends mentioned here. 
Um, and these will be updated uh, next week. I know you have last week's uh, page, but these will be updated for next week. And then if we're praying for uh, the expecting mothers here in the church. Uh, Molly Thompson, who's uh, still a part of our church somewhat, so we'll keep her in prayer during this time. And then Alexis Bath and Audra as well, uh, just praying for the process uh, during this time that uh, the babies will be healthy and the mothers as well. Uh, for those who are dealing with chronic health issues, we want to mention uh, Ashley Severia just uh, continuing to uh, what it seems like decline. So let's keep her in prayer that um, the doctors would figure out what's what's going on and that she can get the medication needed and the help needed. So let's keep her in prayer and her family as well. And mentioning chronic health issues, so many mentioned here, uh, so many people, and it just seems like the list goes on and on. But let's keep these folks in prayer for the families as well dealing with this. And for those who are also dealing with cancer, many friends and families, many people that are, uh, you know, directly uh, dealing with this in the church, whether it's your family members or, or friends. And uh, let's just continue to pray for them, that uh, they'll, they'll just be healed during this time. And obviously many things uh, starting to open up. Uh, that's a praise. And uh, for our ministries here, a blessing for the bus ministry, seeing those kids here on Sunday. And uh, many of the kids, we have some new ones, some uh, returning. Uh, we were out and about uh, on Saturday, and we were looking for kids. And, you know, I, I, as I mentioned last week, you know, we, we just happened upon one of the kids who used to come. And we said, oh, aren't you in that house? And he says, no, we moved. I'm like, oh, that's unfortunate. He's like, yeah, we moved to that house, you know, the house right next to it. So, hey, that's a blessing. So we were able to pick them up, and they were excited to come. They were ready waiting out on the sidewalk. We said we'd come to the door. They were out there. They were just ready to come to church. So right. uh, let's continue to pray for the bus ministry, that it would grow, and that uh, we'd be able to just see many opportunities. And we'd see the Lord work. Um, continuing on, uh, let's pray for uh, the unspoken. Uh, Miss LaRose, we're continuing to pray for you. You know, we may not know it, but the Lord does, so we're continuing to pray for you. Yes, of course. And for the college students, uh, Rebecca is back, and we trust that you had a great semester, and we're excited that you're back. And then for those who are graduating this year, uh, I know Sam Allen is graduating soon, and uh, he'll be having a uh, party in a few weeks, so that's great. And uh, keep them in prayer. And those who are returning uh, or out and about this year, I know uh, Matt, is, is has he headed out yet? Or is he headed to Central America yet? Or No, not yet. Okay. But he'll be, he'll be all over the uh, uh, Central and South America. So let's keep him in prayer for this summer. Great opportunity. And of course, those in the military around the globe, let's keep them in prayer. For our missionaries, also the new missionaries that we added, let's pray that, uh, that you'd be a blessing. Obviously, one of the missionaries... Uh, we reached uh, 100% with our support, so that's a blessing. And for the missionaries that we all already are supporting, let's continue to pray for them. Um, for our country, it's seeming like it's nearing the end for COVID, but for many, it's it's a continued battle. So let's pray for them. And our, of course, our building project seems like things are uh, slowly going, but let's pray that the construction will just be able to finish and that we'll, they'll be able to get out of here and we can get the, the property to how it was looking before. But let's continue to pray for our church and uh, for the process there. But at this time, uh, if there are no other prayer requests, we'll go at this time and gather into groups. And uh, maybe you're uncomfortable still. If you'd like to pray by yourself, that's fine. But pastor will be up here for the men if anybody would like to come up and pray. And at this time, we'll, we'll get up, gather into our groups and pray.
Let's pray at this time. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for once again allowing us to gather here, worship you, learn more about your word, and apply it to our lives. Lord, we think of these requests that were mentioned. We continue to ask you that you would just help them. Lord, help us tonight. Lord, we thank you for just giving us salvation, so rich and free. Lord, thank you for uh, it only being through you, and that it's not of our works, lest any man should boast. And Lord, we thank you for giving us that. Lord, we pray that you help us tonight concerning uh, your word that we're about to study. I pray, I pray that we take it seriously, and that we uh, take it to heart. And Lord, that we comfort one another with these words. We thank you for pastor, and thank you for so many who have uh, just made this church what it is. And I pray that you continue to help us to be a light into the cities uh, around us, and Lord, that we'd be an influence everywhere we go. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, once again, it is so good to be with you. And um, we're coming to the end of our study here in 2 Thessalonians. We're in the last chapter in chapter 3. So if you want to head over there while you're turning over there, I see some new faces here tonight. And uh, so good to have some, some uh, new folks with us, and uh, we appreciate you if you are a guest here in our church. Uh, we want you to know we are always grateful when uh, folks stop in and worship with us or study with us uh, on Wednesdays. So praise the Lord for you joining with us tonight. And if you're joining with us from home uh, on our live stream, thank you for tuning in. And we are, as I said, coming to the close of this great book. It's the second letter to the church at Thessalonica. And uh, this has really been uh, a book that, I'm going to be honest with you, from our church, from our church, I probably have gotten the most questions and feedback, <laughs> especially talking about uh, future events. And there's a lot of, a lot of discussion after services or during the week uh, about these uh, things in the future. And so I've been praying and uh, asking the Lord what direction to go to next, of course, we're ending the book, and we're going to be picking up in a new study. And so if you want to take some time this week, uh, I'm sorry, not this week, the next week. Next week, we're going to still be in this uh, book here. We're going to divide it in half. So chapter 3 is really the conclusion, uh, concluding thoughts that Paul gives. So we're going to split it in half. Uh, but the following week, we're going to pick up in a new study in the book of Revelation. Okay, so uh, we'll... Join there together. So if you want to begin now uh, going through and reading, and we'll come together and uh, discuss that great book of, about future events. Uh, there's no doubt people have a lot of questions about future events. People have a lot of questions in general uh, and, uh, and what the Bible has to say about things. I got a question last night. Are aliens real? Outer space, I guess the Pentagon's releasing stuff. I, I don't know. Uh, and uh, is, there, is there life uh, apart from planet Earth? That's a great question, isn't it? And, um, and you're all looking at me like I have an answer? I have <laughs> <laughs> you're waiting, huh? I don't know. I'll I, I tell you this, though. The imagination is wonderful. Uh, we, we love uh, to imagine certain things. I'm a, I'm, I'm a sci-fi nut. I'm just letting you know. I, I like uh, science fiction movies. Always have, um, and I don't think it's sinful to indulge to a point as long as it doesn't remove you from your faith. And uh, you know, I do believe. Um, well, you know, I'm not going to get into it now. We'll get into it another time. But uh, but there is a lot of interest in future events. There's interest in life outside of, of course, planet Earth. And the Bible does have uh, uh, doesn't give in detail everything. And I don't believe we have those details into everything. But it does give us enough. Um, of, of uh, what God has revealed to mankind and what we need to know for um, not only life on earth, but uh, the purpose of it. And, um, and so the Bible has a lot to say, and I, I do believe it is a book for answers. And so we'll jump into Revelation in a couple of weeks, so look forward to that. But right now we're in 2 Thessalonians in chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 in chapter 2. Um, remember, Paul had to deal with uh, the, the Thessalonian church who was struggling with um, 
a, a, really a thought that they had missed the rapture of the church, that they were in the great tribulation period. And so he had to address that and let them know, listen, you're not going to, you'll know. You'll know when it's going to happen, uh, the tribulation at least, because two things will uh, be in place. Number one, there'll be a great falling away. And number two, the wicked one will be revealed. And so those are the two things that we looked at. And the wicked one, meaning the Antichrist, he said he will be revealed. And he gave some details on how he's going to, you know, commit that, um, uh, the uh, uh, abomination, the great abomination of desolation where he goes into Jerusalem and sits upon the throne of David claiming to be God. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. And he's going to turn on Jerusalem. He'll make peace at first, but then he's going to turn uh, on God's people. Uh, so the, the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation period is where we're going to read over in Revelation is all the judgments that come upon the earth. And God has a plan in that also to redeem the earth. He's already brought about the redemption of man, but this world is still cursed. Uh, the curse of sin is still active in, in the world around us, and that's why we suffer disease. That's why there are floods and tornadoes and catastrophes plagues, all these things come from the earth being cursed by sin. Now, we know a lot of it is uh, man-made. There are a lot of man-made things that, uh, that hurt us. You know, man's sin hurts us. It has a ripple effect. And uh, we know that. We've had other people's sins hurt our lives. Have you had that happen before? Other people's sin hurts you. And, and no doubt we're living in a world that is cursed by sin, this corruption, you know, and all this trickles um, into our lives. But one day God is going to not only, um, he's already brought about redemption through Jesus Christ, and of course those who believe in him can experience full redemption. They can have forgiveness, uh, and he <clears throat> extends eternal life. Uh, and, uh, but one day he's going to deal also with the earth, uh, the earth itself, and uh, is going to bring about redemption. So, uh, in fact, the Bible says the whole creation groaneth together. Uh, this creation's groaning. Do you hear it? Do you hear it groaning? Just turn on the news. You'll hear it groaning. Um, it's always groaning, waiting for its redemption. But uh, 2 Thessalonians in chapter 3 is where Paul is giving some concluding thoughts. Uh, as he's ending his letter, he wants to give them some, uh, some things that will help them to remain steady. I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to lower these fans a little bit because my papers are blowing around up here. All right. Um, remember, the title of our lesson is Ready and Steady. So it's not only being ready, and of course that would mean ready for the coming of Christ, which could happen at any time. The rapture of the church is imminent, meaning at any time Jesus can, uh, could come. No man knows the hour, uh, the Bible says. Uh, but we are to be ready, but until that day, we're to be steady. And that means being faithful, faithful um, to the work which Christ began in us. And don't you want to run your course faithfully as a Christian to be able to say at the end, and, I, and listen, no one's running it perfectly. We get that. We know that. We're human. Um, nobody is sinless, but we can finish we can finish what God has started in us, being faithful to God. Um, and that's my prayer, that through this study, that we will learn what it means to be steady. And we will gain encouragement to be steady, even by being here tonight, that we'll get a little bit closer to following Christ and putting our footsteps a little bit closer to the footsteps that he walked while he was here on this earth. So, with that thought in mind, let's go to chapter 3 here, and beginning in verse 1. Notice these, the first word he says, finally. Uh, Paul uses this word. It's interesting. I've, I've seen this word used in other letters that Paul has written. He actually means it here because he's only going to say a few more things. But like in, chap in uh, Philippians, I believe, like in the second chapter, he's saying, finally. Then he goes on for another you know, couple of chapters. <laughs> That's just like a Baptist preacher, amen? Finally, and he goes on for another uh, half hour. Uh, but he actually means it here. Finally, he just has a few closing thoughts here as he concludes this great uh, book. Now, if you look to your lesson, 
uh, in the introduction, it says, The church in Thessalonica was started under difficult circumstances. And by the way, you can read about its beginnings in Acts chapter 17. I've been saying that all along in case you want to go back and take a look at that. Uh, Paul had been there maybe a month, says three Sabbath days, um, when the Jews of Thessalonica rose up against Paul and drove him out of town. The new church continued, but they were under constant persecution. In a way, they've been going through their own tribulation. Paul wrote his two letters from Corinth to deal with some of the situations that he had been hearing about from Timothy, who had been visiting the Thessalonians. We think that the second letter was written shortly after the first, perhaps as soon as a year later. In this second letter, now a lot of this is review, but remember, Paul deals with these two issues. He deals with bad teaching about the Lord's return, again, the strange doctrine that was being taught that somehow the Thessalonians had missed the rapture. So Paul taught them that the Antichrist had to appear on the world scene before Jesus came back. Um, So, and the second one was Paul was also concerned about a growing group of people, now uh, notice this, who had quit their jobs and weren't working. Is this a timely message? Uh, I think this is the message for our day. I'm just saying, uh, this is uh, this is interesting. Okay, so Second um, Thessalonians chapter three. Let's look here. He says, "Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, and that you may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith, but the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you." And keep you from evil. We have confidence in the Lord touching you that you both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Uh, We'll end our reading here uh, because verse 6 actually kind of begins a new thought. But just in these five verses tonight, I want to look at these and give you some thoughts here. Uh, Let's back up, and we'll take it verse by verse. Again, he says, finally, brethren, pray for us. So there's a prayer request here that Paul is ending this letter with. Pray for us, he says. Now, what does he want the Thessalonian church to pray about? You know, we have our prayer night tonight. We have our list, and we, we have things upon that list. They're subjects of prayer. Well, what is Paul's subject of prayer that he's asking them? Well, let's look here together. He says, pray for us. Number one, he says that the word of the Lord may have free course. So in your study there under number one, put his prayer request, number one, was an effective word, an effective word. He says that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Now, that's interesting. He's praying that the word of God would have free course. Now, what does free course mean? It means to run swiftly. That's what it means, to run swiftly. The Greek word is treko, to run. Uh, Like those who would run in a race or a course, it's a metaphor taken from runners in a race to exert oneself or to strive hard. This is one of Paul's prayer requests that he's making of the Thessalonians, that the word of God would have free course or, or it would run swiftly. Um, now, this prayer request, I believe, is something that you and I also can pray for today in 2021 that God's word would have free course, even here tonight, that it would run swiftly through our lives, that it would have a, 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 you know, a, a course, a way in our own lives. And, of course, you know, the Word of God is um, free course, I would say. You know, when when it has free course, it's reaching its destination. What is the destination for the Word of God for us here tonight? It's our heart, right? It's our heart. It's not only our mind. It's not just filling our mind with knowledge. No, God wants His Word hidden in our heart. Because if we hide it in our heart, then it truly has the capacity for change. Not only change in our lives, but change in the world around us. And uh, so that's really the destination of God's word 
is to get to people's hearts. And that ought to be our prayer, not only for here tonight, but our, uh, the prayer for our city, the prayer for these kids back here learning tonight, not only the teen group, but the Bible builders. Listen, we're, th- these groups are set up so that the Word of God can have free course in their lives. It can reach their hearts. And uh, that's the ministry, the ministry of the Word. Not only does it uh, have, you know, a, a prayer request here, but also for our missionaries. Again, praying that God's Word will have free course in their field of service. You know, we just had a missionary here this past uh, Sunday. I wonder, have we prayed that the Word of God would have free course in Brazil? Have we prayed that the Word of God will have free course in St. Lucia or in East Providence? You know, these missionaries of the week. One of the prayer requests we ought to pray that God's Word would have free course in the lives of the, the, that, that, the, that area, those people. And so that was his prayer. You know why? Because Paul was a traveling evangelist. And he went, around, he went about uh, preaching the gospel. Um, in fact, he planted this church in Thessalonica. Again, Acts chapter 17, you can read about it. And that was his mission, to preach God's word. And so he wanted to do that most effectively. And I would ask, church, would you pray that for Mountain View Baptist Church? Every time we meet together, God's word would have free course in the lives of people, in the hearts of people. And uh, that was his prayer. Um, Not only that God's word would have free course, but notice also, uh, number two, is that he would be delivered from the unreasonable. So number two is delivered from the unreasonable. (laughs) That's a good prayer. Lord, deliver me from unreasonable people. (laughs) I like that prayer request. Um, And, you know, it's needed. It's needed because Paul dealt with a lot of them along the way. In fact, we know this church began with a lot of unreasonable people. Let's, in in fact, if you would, uh, I've been talking a lot about Acts chapter 17. Just hold your finger here real quickly. Let's just go back there real quickly in Acts chapter 17. And uh, we'll see once again. What happened when he began the church at Thessalonica? Okay, so verse 1 of Acts chapter 17 is when they're coming into Thessalonica. It says, now when they had passed through um, Amphipolis and uh, uh, Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where it was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went into, uh, unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. But it wasn't long after this, and we, we see here that many were saved, many believed. But notice verse 5, But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. So you see why Paul is asking prayer to deliver him from unreasonable people? You see why he would pray that prayer? They knew all about unreasonable people. That's where it began. But, you know, there's a lot of other things, too. I was uh, just thinking about some of the things that Paul was, had to deal with. Um, and uh, if you would just go back, well, I'm sorry, go forward to chapter 18. Chapter 18 is where Paul is writing first and Thessalonians from. He's writing from Corinth. So both of these letters came around the time of Acts chapter 18, okay? Uh, Notice in verse 1, it says, After after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately coming from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came, uh, came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought. By their occupation, they were tent makers. So just think about this for a moment. All that Paul was dealing with while he's writing First and Second Thessalonians, he's making tents. <laughs> he's working. And, uh, and you say, why are you talking about that? What, what's that have to do with anything? I'll get to it in just a moment. So Paul, he's working. Um, and then in verse 4, notice verse 4, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks 
And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. Notice verse 6. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth. I will go unto the Gentiles. So here's Paul writing First and Second Thessalonians. He's at Corinth. He's working, making tents, trying to make a living. Then on the Sabbath day, he's going and reasoning the scriptures, dealing with these Jews who are opposing him, blaspheming him. So, that, so he's, he's dealing with that as well. Uh, but notice, if you would, uh, again in verse 7, it says, And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And Crispeth, uh, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. So now he has some that he's dealing with who are getting saved and uh, uh, getting baptized, growing in the Lord. Uh, you say, what are you talking about? I'm just saying this. Paul had a lot going on. And you read on, you know, it, it just, I mean, all kinds of things that are going on in his life. Um, and yet, he's writing these letters and saying, be steady. Be, you know, stay faithful to God. Um, I was just burdened about that. I was burdened because I know oftentimes people have a lot going on in their lives and those things become a priority over the ministry or over the Lord. Paul never let his his personal life and the things that were going on in his life disrupt his faithfulness to God. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm just, I admire that. Because as you look around, boy, some people, you know, their job takes them away. Or their, their hobbies take them away. Or some conflict. You know, Paul had conflict. I mean, conflict takes people away. There's all kinds of things that, that you know, that take people away from being faithful to God. And I just want us to be encouraged that Paul had the same kind of things that are going on in our lives but yet he remained faithful. And I, I think the Thessalonian church were really encouraged by him writing this, knowing how busy he was, knowing all that he dealt with in his life, and yet he could stay faithful to God. And so stay steady. Um, but he, his, his prayer was this, deliver me from the unreasonable. I like that. I don't know. I, I just uh, That's a good prayer request. With all that I have to do, I don't have time to be dealing with unreasonable people. In fact, uh, you read over in 2 Timothy chapter 4, that's Paul's last writing. You won't hear anything more from the Apostle Paul after 2 Timothy chapter 4. And you know what he brought up? He brought up an unreasonable person. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. And uh, there were people that were just unreasonable in his life but it didn't keep him from being faithful. People will, um, they will disappoint you. They will knock you off track. By the way, they're even here. They're even among us. And you know what I found? Usually it's only one person, you know, that will say something or do something to get us all messed up. And you know, if we're not careful... We'll, we'll group the whole, you know, we'll, we'll group it together as the whole. Well, you know, that church, well, wait a minute. No, something happened. It was just one person. One person that said something or one person that did something. But if we're not careful, we'll, we'll just say, no, that, that church. Well, listen, that church, within that church, there's a lot of blessings. And there's a lot of people that are, that are following God who will be an encouragement to you. But you've allowed one thing to get stuck in your craw and you just can't shake it. And by the way, there is a, a, a remedy for that. There is a resolution for that. Go to that person. Go to that person. If, if, if they've sinned against you, go to that person. Make it right. And if they're not willing to make it right, then there's another formula for that in Scripture. And, and we can follow that and come to a place of restoration. 
or discipline. So um, <clears throat> stay steady. Stay steady. Deliver me from the unreasonable was his prayer. Number three, uh, let's look at, go back in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and look at, if you would, in verse 3. This is wonderful. So he says, deliver me from unreasonable wicked men, for all men have not faith. And boy, isn't that the truth? Not everybody's going to appreciate you, but I love that. I lo- you know, whenever you see that word, but, uh, you have to go back, see what's said. You know, there are unreasonable people, but. The Lord is what? Faithful. I love that. He says, the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And this is what I love about the Apostle Paul is with all of the great things that happened in that church and how faithful they were. I mean, you think about what happened there. You know, many believed. We know that. Remember, it says uh, many Jews believed. And then it says in many... uh, uh, it says of noble woman, not a few. I mean, there were a lot of people that got saved, important people, powerful people. And God was, uh, God's word had free course in their lives. And that was all exciting. But listen, Paul was not dependent at any time on their faithfulness. Though he was commended their faithfulness and got excited about their faithfulness to God, He wasn't dependent upon it, was he? He said, notice again, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you. You saw great things happening among them, but the source was always back to the Lord and his faithfulness. Why? Because number three, if you didn't write it in, if you didn't write anything, number three is this. He won't let you down. He, that's God, he'll never let you down. And so people, they will let you down, but Jesus never will. Paul learned this in Corinth. God kept his promises to Paul. Uh, If you would, take your Bible and let's join together in 2 Corinthians in chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And once you're there, let's skip down to verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Okay, verse 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perisheth, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Isn't that wonderful? The outward man's perishing. What does that mean? It's getting old. Amen? It's, it's, uh, it's, you know, at times we get sick. We get weary. We get discouraged. You know, all these things. But notice this. But the inward man is renewed by day to day. You know what that means? The, the inward man's getting younger. That's how it should be happening. The outward's perishing, but the the inward is getting younger. It's renewed day by day. So, you know, if you just celebrated another birthday, you say, oh, another year older. Listen, spiritually, you grew another year younger. (laughs) Happy birthday, Libby. That was for you. (laughs) All right. But he says this. Look at verse uh, 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. What does that mean? Keep your eyes upon the Lord. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And the things of this earth, like the song says, will grow strangely dim. Even the disappointments that come from often people. We've got to get our eyes on the Lord. Look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So, God will never let you down. Put your eyes upon the Lord. If you want to stay steady, if you want to stay faithful, you've got to get your eyes off people. And don't, your faithfulness does not depend on their faithfulness. Your joy does not depend on their joy or, or their disappointment or their, you know, being miserable, whatever the case, unreasonable. Your joy is from the Lord. And we can have joy in the midst of all of that. Tribulation, 
Persecution. That's what he was writing to this church that were, that were facing these things. They could stay steady. Number four. Staying steady in their profession. Okay, so he's encouraging them to stay steady in their profession. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 4 says this, And we have confidence in the Lord touching you, <clears throat> that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. Okay, so uh, it's remarkable that when Paul expresses the utmost confidence in Christians, that they will live and act as becomes their profession. Paul had confidence that, you know what? God's word had free course in, the, in their hearts. They've been sounding out the gospel of the regions around them. And Paul just, he saw God's work and he just believed it would continue. Why? Because that's the way it should be. Amen. When a Christian gets saved, they, they have what it takes to be steady. They already do. You have all that it takes to live the Christian life victoriously. So do I. We don't need, listen, by the way, we don't need another conference. We don't need, uh, uh, you know, another workshop or another program or another class. I'm just saying, listen, I'm not saying all that's wrong and we shouldn't benefit from that. But we've already been given all things that pertain unto life and godliness through his word and his spirit. Aren't you glad for that? Now, the rest is just the frosting. I love fellowship. And it's, it's wonderful, you know, programs. And, and listen, I enjoy uh, going to conferences at the time, just have my heart stirred. And, but listen, it's just, already, it's just stirring up something that's already there. Amen? That's all it does. Revival is just stirring up something that's already there. We already have all things that pertain unto life and godliness, as Peter tells us. So, staying steady in their profession. Um, Okay, so uh, he just believed they would. His reliance is not on anything in themselves, but wholly on the faithfulness of God. He must be a stranger to the human heart who puts much confidence in it, even in its best state. <laughs> I like that. Paul, Paul understood something about the human condition, that that's not where the source of our strength and being steady is from. It's from the Lord, his faithfulness. Lastly, here this evening, verse 5. Let's look at verse 5 together. It says, In the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Isn't that wonderful? That phrase, I, I, I mean, this is the first time I really took notice of it. I'm going to be honest. The patient waiting for Christ. What does that mean? It means the patience of Christ. Um, his prayer was that they might have the love of God in their hearts and the patience of Christ. That's the same patience that Christ had when he endured his trials. Okay? So it's not saying, let's patiently wait for Christ. That's not what it's saying. What he's saying is that we need the patience of Christ. That's in its, in its context. That's what he's, what, he's, what he's talking about, is us having the patience of Christ. Why? Because Christ had patience in his trials. Think about how Christ dealt with his trial. Even his crucifixion. You know, when they brought Christ before the, the, those rulers and Pontius Pilate, they were asking him and questioning him. You know what the Bible says about Christ during that time? It says he was as a sheep before her shearers is dumb or quiet. You want to talk about patience. I mean, he could have called 10,000 angels. But yet he had the patience to endure his trials. Um, and so we need that patience. Church, we need that patience to endure trials. Because they will come. And listen, they will threaten your faithfulness to Christ. Hear me. They're going to threaten your faithfulness to Christ. Those trials and temptations. Hey, your sin, your own sin and temptation will threaten your perseverance and faithfulness to Christ. And so what do we need? We need the patience of Christ. That patience he had. We need to learn of it. And we need it. They needed patience because they might endure, uh, so that they might endure their trials in a proper manner. 
It was not natural for the apostle to refer to them. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going too quick, quickly. It was natural for the apostle to refer them to the Savior, the great example of patience, and to pray that they might have the same which he had. So we can stay steady. In his concluding thoughts, Paul asked for prayer. This was his prayer request. God's word would be effective. He'd be delivered from the unreasonable. Then he goes on to say, it's all tied up in God's faithfulness. That's where it really is. That's how we do stay steady. That's how we stay steady in our profession of being a Christian, relying on the faithfulness of Christ and learning the patience of Christ. And so, church, may the Lord help us to capture this, to really get a hold of what Paul is saying here, because, friend, this is a day that we need. We need to be steady. Um, You know, with all that's happened this past year, we're seeing it. Many have faltered in their faith. This this time has been a time for for a a struggle. Listen, I'm not here judging. My heart is that that they'll get stirred up once again. They'll get back to the things of God. We've had people in our church that they're faltering in their faith. Pray for them. Pray that God's word would have free course in their life. Pray that they'll learn the patience of Christ so that they can remain steady. Not look at people. That's a, you know, I've seen this over and over. People get discouraged at church. Say, you know, what happened? Why aren't you coming anymore? Oh, this person, this one person did this. Well, what about all the rest of your family? Oh, you start mentioning them. Oh, I like that person. That person's nice. That, you know, well, there's a lot of blessings there. So you're telling me you're hooked on the one? That one person is robbing you of all the rest of those blessings at church? Think about it. You don't think Satan's trying to knock us off the path through discouragement, through trials and and, and temptations? Absolutely. But God's faithful. He'll never disappoint you. Let's get our eyes on the Lord tonight. Amen. Let's bow together for prayer. Father, we thank you for our time together. Thank you, Lord, for this book. Thank you, Lord, for those who've run the course before us and who've paved the trail. And, and uh, Lord, that we can follow uh, in their footsteps, but ultimately to follow yours because you are our great example. But, Lord, we are thankful for people as well who, um, who run their course and stay steady and help us also to stay steady. Lord, we do want to pray for those tonight who are uh, a little shaky in their faith and some are living a double-minded life. And, and Lord, I just pray that you would just help uh, that the Word of God would indeed have free course in their lives and, that, Lord, that they would... Just heed the proddings of your spirit. Lord, for us here, Lord, we realize at any time we could fall. Lord, we we don't at any uh, point claim that we are above any of that. We know it's only by your grace. Help us to continue to keep our eyes upon you. We'll thank you for all that you do. Lord, we love you. Bless us now as we dismiss Lord, we look forward to meeting once again this Sunday. And, uh, but until then, Lord, just keep us safe. We love you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church, for coming tonight. The Lord loves you. I love you. And you're dismissed. At the end of every service, by the way, I didn't mention this, but uh, we, we do have our in-person giving. And uh, brother, brother Christian, is there a plate back there? No? All right. Would you come and grab one? And just, if you wouldn't mind, just uh, standing back there. Some folks choose to give on Wednesday. There will be opportunity for you as you head out today if you'd like to give. Uh, But uh, anyway, thank you, Christian. All right. Lord loves you. I love you. And you're dismissed.